Hello everyone. My name is Chef Didar Singh, Assistant Professor, Chitkara School of Hospitality. In today's session, we'll talk about the ingredients that are required to make cookies. The first and the foremost ingredient is the flour. Requirement of flour quality will vary according to the type of cookie. A cookie having higher fat content will require stronger flour in order to prevent unwanted spread and also to maintain the design of the cookie. Cookies made with egg and very little fat as in the case of fingers require soft cake flour. Flour should be sifted to aerate it and for easy mixing operations. The next ingredient is sugar. Granulation of sugar is very important in cookie making. Coarse grain of sugar will cause more spread of cookie affecting its texture, eating quality etc. It will also create problems in packing and there could be too much breakage of the packed goods. Very fine granulation will not incorporate enough aeration resulting in dense texture, toughness and poor eating quality. Coarsely powdered or a fine granulated sugar should be used. However, in some recipes, a small portion of granulated sugar is added to give the product a particular snappy bite. Some cookies are moist eating in which a part of sugar is replaced with liquid sugar such as invert sugar, honey or corn syrup. Dextrose sugar will have reduced sweetness and will impart darker color to the cookie. The next ingredient is fat. Most cookies are rich in fat content. Fat improves the eating quality. Generally smooth plastic hydrogenated shortenings are used for cookie making. Granular shortenings are unsuitable as they do not aerate sufficiently and distribution of fat in the cookie remains uneven. The fat used for cookie making should be able to cream and incorporate aeration and should not melt at working temperature. Addition of part butter improves the taste and flavor of the cookie and also does not affect the creaming quality. However, butter should be softened before blending with hydrogenated fat otherwise it will break into lumps which will be difficult to homogenize. Hard butter lumps may also cause curdling of the mixture. Our next ingredient is eggs. Eggs form structure of the cookies, impart flavor and taste. Eggs help in maintaining the shape of the cookies. Eggs must be fresh. Whole eggs are best used at room temperature while egg whites whip better when it is cool. The next ingredient is milk. Milk is generally used in the form of dry milk, non-fat. It imparts good color, flavor and a very creamy eating quality. 1 to 2 percent of milk solids achieve very desirable results. Dry milk is best used after dissolving in water if water is an ingredient of the formula. Milk powder should be mixed with equal quantity of sugar in dry state and then small quantity of water should be added to the or to make a lump tree slurry. It is very undesirable to find lumps of milk powder in the finished product. It can also be sifted along with other dry ingredients in case if sufficient water is not part of the formula. The last ingredient that is used for making cookie are flavors. Choice of flavor in cookie is very limited. Generally, use of butter and milk as the ingredients of the formula perform the function of flavoring agents which is further fortified with vanilla which is used within limits of 0.5 to 1.0 or 1% based on flour. Artificial butter and milk flavors should be used with utmost care as even slightly excessive quantity may impart very strong and unacceptable flavor to the product. Let's now discuss some important points regarding different types of cookies. 
Short cookie dough should be chilled before sheeting. If chilling is not possible, relax the dough for at least half an hour before sheeting. Do not use too much dusting flour for sheeting the dough. Small portions of the dough should be sheeted at a time. Scrap dough from previous sheeting should be mixed with fresh dough immediately. This will avoid toughness from excessive scrap dough. Dough should be sheeted to even thickness. The center of the sheeted dough is generally thicker than the edges. Center portion should be given special attention. Bagged out cookies should be spaced evenly on the baking sheet. Leave enough space in between cookies for spread. If bagged cookies or bagged out cookies are to be garnished, do it immediately and before dry skin is formed on cookie surface. Icebox cookies Icebox cookies after cutting and placing them on baking sheet should be allowed to come to room temperature before baking. Top heat in case of baking of icebox cookies should be controlled. Otherwise, delicate colors of biscuit design will become brown and unattractive. Macaroons should be baked on paper lined sheets or alternately on lined or lightly greased and dusted sheets. Macaroons should be allowed to form a crust before baking. Some macaroons are dried out overnight before baking. Macaroons should be baked at very low temperature. Thank you so much for listening.